Hey everybody, I got a great little game called Demeter here. This one is about us, you know, off into the future, exploring another planet, and this time we're looking for some dinosaurs. We need to build some research stations, you know, try to discover different species, score a bunch of different points, build out little various science research labs. There's all sorts of things going on. It sounds crazy, it sounds tough, but I promise you, this one, this one's worth hanging in there. It is a great little game that I am excited that I got my hands on because it's a French game. And uh, the company is, sorry, we are French. I'm gonna put it right there. It's crazy, but that's, that's what it says. It says, sorry, we are French. No apology necessary because this one is awesome. Let's take a look at Demeter. website I would love it if you grab one of our templates this one I wasn't certain the kind of template you want I made some vertical I made some horizontal I also put some with the rules on it some with the rules off of it so you grab the one that works best for you I tried to put some of the reminder rules off to the side in case you had a question while you played but you can grab that copy right down below and check out some of the other games that we have and offer there as well love for you to join us in the live stream love for you to play with your students so pick up a copy of Demeter even even though I said it's a French game, you can get it here in the United States. Different vendors hold it. Uh, it's a little hard to get, but very least you could play with us or watch one of our live streams that we play. All right, without further ado, let's get down to business here on the game of Demeter. Looking at all the various things we have here, you can see we have this glorious setup here and I absolutely love it. We got some scoring tiles off to the side that are double-sided. The bright side shows what you get if you're the first to get that sort of unlocked goal. If not, everyone else that gets it can get the smaller value. All of them are just two less than what's depicted here. We have some end game scoring here that we can do. There are different categories. There are 12 different possibilities. So if we play, you're gonna have to check out which one we're aiming at. And just cause these are up there, A, B, C, D, doesn't mean you've even unlocked to score that ability. So we're gonna have to check that out. There's all sorts of things going on. And then we have these decks. These decks are kind of the crux of the game. There are 15 cards in these decks. And before the game starts, we're gonna remove three of them, put them back in the box. So we're only playing with 12. This is our game timer. There's only 12 turns in this game. We would do it for all of the decks. These go back in the box. That's gonna mix things up and make every gameplay slightly different, which I dig. I always love that kind of variability. Now, looking at the flow of the turn, first thing we do is flip over a card from each of the various categories. So we have all of these cards laid out, and I gotta tell you that the anatomy of a card is pretty simple. You have an action at the top, whatever one you select. Each turn, you're only gonna select one of these, and you're gonna get to do the action that's at the top and then you get to cross off that category on the bottom. So let's jump over to our score sheet here. Those cards correspond here, and this is the first action of the game, you're gonna reveal cards. Second action of the game, we are going to take one of these cards as our action, and you do the top portion of the card, and then you do the bonus action down below. The bonus action here is this this part of our player sheet you cross off the thing you selected so in my example i selected this gear so i cross off the first box in the gear and i get this bonus and gears equal any one level one category which means one action of that category because these other categories if you take a look at them as you do more purple actions let's say you're going to get more powerful now you get to do two purple actions Ah, oh, you get to do three purple actions. On this one, you'd get to do four purple actions. However, it stops there. So <laughs> once you've taken four purple cards, for example, you can't take another purple card because you've no more actions to cross off. However, you can take that gray action and use it as a level one, which would just be one purple action. All right, so now we gotta see what these various categories mean and how they interact on this giant sort of player sheet of ours. I promise it's not too hard. 
stick with me. All right, we're gonna go down and look at all the possible actions you could take and how they work on the board, because then it'll give you a really sense of what you can do in this game. And again, remember, you're really restricted to that card selection you've made. So, all right, now we're gonna wanna look at how all of the various actions in the game work. We got these cards here. We got our player board over here. So let's see how these all work together in, in, in these actions. And the first one here is discovering species. That can be known with these little like animal paws or claws, right? And you gotta pay attention to the color. This is this particular card saying that I get to color in two red portions of an animal. And so looking at an animal, we got some red portion, we got some green portion, sometimes we have a blue portion. Uh, so for example, I can color in this spot here. And I got to do that twice. So I could do it in an entirely different area or species or I could, you know, continue to try to get another one of these. So that's, that's it. Then I would do the bottom portion action, which in this case, if I selected that one, that would be this yellow. This yellow arrow is called studying a discovered species. This is one of the, the head scratchers of the game. You can't really take that action or use that action until you have a fully discovered dinosaur. And when you do, you'll see that there are these yellow lines next to the dinosaur. You can then connect those. And once you've connected both, you gain the appropriate bonus, whatever that is. However, you have to have the whole dinosaur discovered. You can see that I'm not covering the little colors because some of those deal with end game scoring. So you don't want to really cover up what colors you've, you've had. Next, let's look at recruiting scientists. That's that's anytime you have that little meeple figurine, you look around the board and we see that happen in all of these banners. There's these meeple figurines. You build them left to right and when you fill them in, you get the various bonus that's above them. However, you are restricted on the number of ones you can build based on these observation posts. You can build all the ones to the left of them, but once you hit that observation post, you have to have built that observation post to study more dinosaurs in that area of the planet. And to do so, you'd fill in that portion. And then once you've done that, you've kind of unlocked these next two. Once you've filled in these, you've unlocked these two. Once you've filled in these three, you've unlocked these. Uh, for example, here, you're, you're, you can study all of them before that observation deck. In this particular pen, you can't fill in any until you've actually made an observation post in that area. And always when you fill in both of the characters or however many characters there are, you unlock the bonus above it. These can be really powerful, but again, you're stuck with only 12 actions in the game, plus whatever your bonus unlocked actions are. But really like we're gonna only play 12 turns, 12 cards. You're gonna pick 12 cards, people. It's pretty tight game. Speaking of a tight game, one way to sort of loosen it up a little bit is erect some buildings. And when you do that, that's up here, there are various powers here uh, that you get. It, it just adds to the various actions. So when you select that action, you get that benefit. One thing to notice here, so you get plus one on any of those. And then this one is the black paw represents a wild. You can use it any in any of the discovering of a species. And there's a couple spots, you see that black paw. One is right here, another one's right here. This is if you have sort of even development. If I have discovered all of these, if I got all of these, the moment I got all of those, I unlock this. The moment I get all of those, I unlock two black paws. And again, it's got a little reminder here, black paw equals all of the various colors. We've already talked about erecting some buildings. One of the other things you can make are those observation posts. We sort of talked about those when we were recruiting scientists. Those were those meeple figurines. Those posts are, are these, right? So when you get to do that, you get to fill in those portions of the observation post and then thus unlocking more. These can be great end game scoring. We'll get to that in a sec. We're gonna leave that spiciness to the end here of the video. The last category to sort of look at here is this end game scoring here, this A, B, C, and D. And a big piece of this is uh, working on progressing on the research track, which is found at the top of your board here. And this is that interesting piece I was talking about. While these are out here, and a lot of games have this, where 
where you score various ways here but a lot of times the game just gives it to you 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 can do this because they're laid out there in this game you have to kind of discover these things and this research track begins here so when you get uh, one of these little beaker things from from any of the various bonuses around or the card you select you start here and you just sort of fill in that spot and you fill in one spot per beaker and when you cover something up you get that benefit so here I would get to make one of the observation posts and that would help me in one of the various categories down below but you can see these tracks eventually lead some of these end game scorings and when you get there you then could score that you could score this you could score that if you made it all the way there on the research track however if you didn't then you don't get to score that one no matter how well you are in that category and you notice d is off to the side it's not part of that research track you get to d a completely different way you get to d by studying some of the discovered species you'd have to get these both discovered and then connect four arrows and you have unlocked D that is huge one other way you could get to D or one of the other ones is doing the same thing here however you're only allowed to do that if you've discovered these you got to remember that you got to first discover the dinosaurs because those arrow tracks are researching sort of the life of that dinosaur and you have to fully have discovered the species to be able to do that to draw those arrows so you can't start drawing these arrows till you have filled in all of the sections of a particular dinosaur body then you can sort of work on these yellow lines which again are called studying discovered species now we got to talk about points and points are earned throughout the game lots of different ways but a ton of it's gonna happen at the end. First thing we're gonna talk about are these species tile tokens. And let's just take a look here. If you're the first to sort of fill in all of the bodies of the animals in this particular section of the board, you can kind of see the sections here separated. Then you get the bonus. We jump over here and look, this one is worth six points. So I would just write a six here anyone else that gets this on this turn with me can get the six but then we flip this over and now the rest of you can only get it for four points so if we're playing on this live stream make sure you let me know that you have discovered that uh, and we'll fill it in on your board and that's going to be some end game scoring now the rest of the end game scoring you can see sort of goes across this board here and let's just let's just go by category so Category A, it's gonna depend what you have up here. Category B, depends what you have up here. There are 12 different ones of these. I have sort of made the, the, the sheet that I'm working on here, puts them down below. And I would suggest on yours, write it in so you don't have to try to look on my live stream and see what they are. You can kind of, we can go over them in the beginning and you can kind of see this is the, the meeple is A and then the, the other one is B and then the arrow is C and then the little blue claw is D. Now kind of at your leisure, you can kind of look down below what those mean and whether you wanna go for them or not. All right, so that's that chunk. Now we get to this whole chunk here, the star. You just count up how many of these stars you've sort of unlocked. You add them all up, uh, the ones that you've gotten, and that's gonna be your star total. Banners here, we've already discussed that. It's just, you're just gonna add up all the various banners that you've gotten out there. This next category, you don't have to have finished all of the dinosaurs in that particular area. This is just how many different dinosaurs have you discovered at least one of. And so you'd count up the number of different dinosaurs you have, and you can see there, you'd score one, three, six, 10, 15, or 21 if you discovered all of the various species. But again, you don't have to have finished them, just at least that you have one in that category. This next category is where those observation posts can make a huge difference. Per category, you're going to look at your, your highest observation level that you have made all of the components to. And when you do, so let's just take this one. Let's say the highest I got was one. You're gonna take one and times that by the number of discovered dinosaurs. So in that case, it was three. So I get three points. However, if in the game I had filled in all of these, we would have done three times three. And so this area for me would have been worth nine points, right? And I would go and do the next one and the next one, and the next one and add all of those up. 
and put that score right here. Big points, big points. The last one is these books. You can see them around here. So these are just total books out here. Books like this one are saying you get two points for every red card that you have played. So you, you would have hoped you've crossed off a bunch of those for possibly eight points. You have a book here that's just straight up three points. You have a book here that's two times the number of blue, straight two points. You add up all your book values and you put that there. You sum all of this together and that is your final score in the game, Demeter. That is it for this game. I know it seems big, it seems hard, but actually it's really, it flows super nice. This game's 15, 20 minutes with lots of meaty choices. It's gonna be one that you're gonna wanna load up and play again, I promise you. Uh, I absolutely love the tightness of this game. The fact that there is only 12 turns on this board and you gotta think how to, to chain those things because it, it does become, can I, get enough bonuses. Can I unlock enough things where if I place this here, it's gonna give me a bonus here, which is gonna let me do something over here, which is gonna let me do something over here because you only have those 12 turns. I promise you, Demeter is gonna be a great game and one that we play on the live stream quite often. Hopefully you end up liking it. If you could, as always, drop a comment down below. Let me think, let me hear what you think about this particular game or some of the other ones we have on the channel. Love the feedback, love the positivity. I hope to see you on our next Let's Play. Take care, everybody.